Hey guys, I am back um, and I am here with my friend Gabby. Hey everybody. Um, so we're making two collaboration videos, one here and then we'll be making one on her channel. I'll post a link um, for everything, obviously. Um, yeah, all right, I guess we'll just get right link into it. Box, that's what she's, yeah. <laughs> Words are like so all over the place for me every time I film too, so it's fine. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, it's definitely a struggle. And it's like, have you been doing this for a while? Cause it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> So as you guys can tell from the title, we will be talking about dating, blind dating, literally blind dating. Um, yeah. And over the years, I've talked a lot about my own crazy stories. Like you guys know about dominoes, the first ever date that I went on, this dude played dominoes for hours, for hours, literally. It Jeez, was atrocious. <laughs> oh, it was really bad. Um... And then there was another dude who, we didn't get past the, like, text talking stage, but he was, mm -hmm. uh, I had mentioned being um, blind or whatever, so, you, you know, you guys know that I use blind and visually impaired interchangeably. And so I just said blind, and most people are like, oh, but are you, like, blind blind, or, like, can you see a little bit? What is that even? Whatever the, I, <laughs> blind blind. I don't know, girl. I do not know. But um, this guy was like, um yeah, my dog is going blind, and I don't really, you know, I'm struggling to deal with him, and I was like, you, you know there's a difference between a remember blind human and a blind pet, right? Remember this story, you were on the phone with me, I think, at one point. Oh, I, think I probably told me. you about this, yeah. And you told me about this, and I cringed so badly, I was like, yes. what? I, I don't understand. I do not understand. But, you know, so I've talked a lot about my dating experience and I've always planned to make like, you know, just like a sit down video talking about dating. And I think that this format would be a lot better just having us talk about it rather than mm -hmm. me just rambling at you guys. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll get right into it. Like Gabby and I were both looking up like the things online, the questions that people have, um, you know, uh, we can each talk to our personal experience or like worries that we have had, whatever the case may be. Um, so yeah, Gabs, do you want to start? Like you or sure. say anything about yourself or yeah. Um, well, I mean, I haven't, I don't have as much dating experience or any at all compared to Lily. Um, just because like, yeah, I just haven't, haven't really started, but that's, that's going to be happening eventually after this Corona stuff is done because you can't really do anything now with Corona, so. You really um, can't. I mean, I just, I still do, like, have my, my, like, my fears, like, they're not, like, terrifying fears, but they're definitely, like, okay, do I tell them before the date starts that I'm blind, or do I wait until they get there to be like, hey, so, I don't know if you know anything, like, if you notice anything about me, but, um. <laughs> this cane in my hand, I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> You're holding. <laughs> so, Lily, what, what are, like, what are some things that you would do in a situation like that? Like, do you say beforehand when you're, like, texting them, or do you do it when you're, like, preparing for, to go on the date? So, for me, I don't, um, discuss it. So, you know, I've used predominantly dating apps. Wait, let me turn my fan back on. Okay. I've used predominantly dating apps and I don't, um, explicitly state that I'm blind or visually impaired. For me, mm -hmm. my eyes are very distinctive because of calcium buildup, a cloudy blue color. And, mm -hmm. um, so from my eyes, people should be able to tell, but people mm -hmm. assume that I'm wearing contacts or that it's a weird filter. Or there was one person who was like, you know, is that a filter or, and I was like, oh, you gave me an option. What's, what's the, or, because I never get a choice. And he's like, or oh, you're blind, but that can't be it. And I was like, actually it is. <laughs> um, but so me, I don't say it, um, I don't, I don't say it in an obvious manner, but I talk about Braille. I talk about this and stuff like that because it's, you know, I don't think being blind is a huge part of my, it's, you know, it's, I'm a musician, I'm a writer, I'm blind. It's, it's one amongst many things. Right. Um, and one of my friends, so for her, she just has like pictures and she has her cane in the photos and she has, you know, and so again, it's not obviously out there, but it's not 
hidden either. Like, you know, we didn't right. write, I'm blind. And I right. think for me, it's, I don't want like a fetishist to just, you know, like, mm, blind, taster. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, also don't want to like it to be awkward, you know, right. Like, I do have some friends and I do have seen profiles where someone's like, yeah, you know, I'm blind and this and that. And so honestly, I think it is your call. But I, for me personally, I always make sure to bring it up in text before the date because I'm just like, it's just going to save us a whole lot of awkward before. And I, you know, I don't want to go out with somebody who's like, my dog is blind. I don't know how to deal with that. And to some extent, I do realize, you know, sometimes like if you do just spring it on somebody, like sometimes it, it actually works out that way because then they're kind of, you know, some people may feel locked into this date and then they may find a perspective that they, you know, didn't expect to gain. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me personally, I will talk about it before the date, even if it's just like a, a very casual, like, hey, you know, well, when we're meeting up tomorrow, you'll have to look out for me because I'm blind. Or, you know, I've found other ways to bring it up, though. Like someone has talked about driving and I was like, well, <laughs> it's illegal for me to do that. So, you know, I usually try to bring it up in humorous ways because it's not a big deal to me. So I don't right. want to bring it up like it's, it's this big And make it a big, serious thing, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it's ultimately your call. But for me personally, like I said, I will bring it up before the date. And in dating um, at profiles, I always make sure to, you know, I put the clues out there. And some people, they pick yeah. it up. They're like, oh, you mentioned Braille, so you're blind. And I'm like, yes, you read. That's amazing. Right. So yeah. Um, I feel like, see, because in my opinion, I, I like the idea of like, letting it be known but not letting it be the first thing that people see when they click on my profile Mm -hmm. Um, like I don't want to be like hey I'm blind and then list all the things that I enjoy I'd rather be the opposite and just have it be in a different way like how your friend just has pictures with her and her cane Mm -hmm. like things like you know but Mm -hmm. also it's like when you bring those things up do you ever feel like it's like okay are they going on a date with me because they want to go on a date with me or is it like now that I said I'm blind, they're kind of in a way pitying me and saying like, oh, let me just go with her because, you know, she said she's blind, so. So for me, I think it has to do with how the conversation continues. If it feels like, if it seems forced, if it seems like, okay, are you actually into this conversation anymore? Um, then it's, it's them. And I feel like, you know, some people are awkward or they don't know how to deal with it. They don't, whatever the case may be. And mm-hmm. some people just carry on as normal. Honestly, I'm startled when people like I bring up that I'm blind. I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. And I was like, do you have any questions? And they're like, no. And I'm like, why, why not? <laughs> because I'm so accustomed to this being, it being such a novel Right. A novelty to people so right. honestly I feel like I, I go off I read the room you know I go off of how the conversation seems like it's going I don't remember having felt that way though that's yeah I'm just curious to know um so I was reading something online earlier and a lot of the people were commenting like other blind people who have been on dates with sighted people mm-hmm. they were talking about the things that we noticed from our perspective versus what sighted people would notice which is more of like the visual aspects like facial expressions clothing you know for us it's like voice it's about like personality and it's interesting to to see how no pun intended but it's interesting (laughs) to see how we view other people like people that we would possibly be going on a date with you know and Mm -hmm. so like, do you ever think of, I feel like I'm just asking you questions at this point. Cause I no, and I'm, I'm, no, I think that's the best way. And that's why I said, I think that this works best as a two-person yeah. dialogue. Cause otherwise I'd just be like, all right, so I found these questions online. <laughs> or I remember when I was reading Cosmo articles at like 1920, when I first got into dating and then I was like, okay, so this makes sense. But as a blind person, how does this apply? So honestly, mm-hmm. I think that this really does work. Um, right. So I definitely don't mind. Okay. Um so I, when I'm looking at profiles, I definitely have my friends like look at faces and my friends, they're great about being objective and subjective. Right. Um, so I'm like, all right, just give me a breakdown. Like, tell me about, about the features. And I'm like, all right, now you, you know, you either have an idea of my type or like, what, like, do you, you know, what do you think? And what do you think generically? And sometimes they're like, okay. 
So I feel like most people would say this person is like handsome or like cute or whatever. But honestly, I don't like, I don't know, the shape of his nose. It just throws off his whole face. And that won't necessarily taint my view, but I get a fuller picture of the person than, right. you know, only going off of messages. The fuller view that they also have of me. Mm -hmm. um, on dates, you know, so having some us usable vision, I, you know, might see at the very least, like the color patterns that they might be interested in, if not necessarily able to see what exactly they're wearing. And so for that, you know, I'm just like, I just hope for the best, you know, go off of where we're going. If we're meeting up at a coffee shop, I'm like, okay, casual, uh, maybe I won't wear my band shirt, but you know, I'm not dressing up either. Right. And so I base it off of the setting rather than trying to like guess what they will wear or, um, you know, things like that. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I feel, yeah. So I don't know. Do you have any questions for me? Cause I feel like, you know. I mean, you know, what's, you mentioned worrying about you know, how to bring up your blindness, but is there like, I guess like technical, like, you know, if you, would you be doing online dating? Like, have you thought yeah. about how you would go about meeting up with the person? Are you comfortable with that? Yes, I have thought about online dating. I actually just spoke about this with my brother yesterday and mm -hmm. like, you know, I want to help you to create your profile because obviously, oh, nice. yeah, he, he's like very, he's like, I want to make sure that you and I work together so that I know like who you would be interested in, who you're not interested in. And then obviously give you like the visual parts about like what I'm seeing. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, when that does start to happen, I have like ideas of like safety precautions because obviously mm -hmm. when you're blind and you have like a disability in general, there's all of these statistics of people that, Oh, like this happens to somebody when they mm -hmm. went on a date. I feel like I have to just have my own idea of what I want, like my own safety plan in mm -hmm. mind because you, yeah, I could be like, okay, we're obviously, I'm not going to make them like, not going to just show up someplace random. It's going to obviously be in public, a, a coffee shop or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not necessarily a fear of mine just because I don't think that you know, having my brother kind of help me to monitor those things and really see like what's going to happen and take into, like, take into consideration, like, okay, how do we really build your profile? Like, do you want to mention that you're blind right away? You know, we didn't really get to discuss it much just because we were out. So we just briefly brought it up. Um, and so I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm fine with it. It's not something that I've ever really thought about. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not, I'm never like, oh, you know, this is, this could happen. I don't try mm -hmm. to look at things that way just because, I don't, I don't know, I just feel like that, you know, if I did feel uncomfortable, I can always just text my, my brothers and be like, hey, like, come get me now. Honestly, I think that's the best way to look at it because, mm -hmm. you know, yes, be aware that things happen. Things happen whether you're sighted, whether you're blind, deaf, mm -hmm. wheelchair bound, whatever. Whatever ability or disability you have or don't have, things are going to happen. But I feel like if you're putting that energy into the universe, I don't want to say that you make it more likely, but I feel like you're hyper aware. So you may misread right. whatever. And, you know, definitely like trust your gut, trust your, if something seems off, then don't do it, you know? But I feel mm -hmm. like you can't go in expecting the worst because if you expect it then you're gonna find it exactly and that's what I've been telling myself I'm like I'm not this is for me to be able to just you know get out there and really like start looking and like you know just just have fun like it's not anything crazy and so I don't want to be the person that's like oh my gosh don't overthink every little situation you know mm -hmm. because yeah the more that you think that way and the more of that energy that you put out that's what you're gonna get back and so I don't know I feel like I'm I'm excited to to see what happens you know <laughs> I'm excited for you for me I always like uh send my location to like a few friends or whatever like you know I'll turn it on for them for however long that I'm out whatever the, and you know so just they're always aware of what I'm doing where I'm going um mm -hmm. And my first ever app initiated date, I was definitely, you know, let me see, four years ago, Jesus, I was 19, almost 20. And um, this was my first date also overall. 
and um, I, oh my God, I'm going to be 24 soon. Jesus. All right. <laughs> um, but it was my first date. Um, and I was like, hey, you know, do you mind if I like bring a friend along with me? And this was, you know, what I was most comfortable with. And after that, I didn't bring anyone else along. But for me, I was very much like, ah, I don't know. And I don't think it was a vibe that I got from this person. Or I don't, you know, I don't think it was anything in particular. I think it was just all of the stories, all of the things online um, that there is about meeting people and you know, just all of the craziness that can happen. And honestly, for, so for me personally, I was happy that I had my friend because <laughs> I told you dude played dominoes for hours. So we entertained each other. It ended up just being a date with me and my best friend. And that was great. I feel like, again, whether you're comfortable bringing someone, whether you're comfortable going by yourself, whatever the case may be, you know, just make sure you're comfortable with it. And if you go by yourself, like I said, it you know, keeping your location services on for your brothers or any friends you have, or just texting a few people, um, and texting a few people where you're going and yeah. Yeah. I definitely think that I've heard like, um, a lot of people do this thing where they'll have whoever. So let's say one of your friends is helping you and they're, they know about the guy that you're about to go on a date with having them like secretly sit across the, the like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whatever. And like, you know, and I feel like, you know, if I did feel uncomfortable, there's definitely, I share my location with my family anyway. So I feel mm-hmm. like, I feel like, hey, just, you know, okay, stay by your phone in case I do need you to like fake text me or something or like, mm-hmm. come, you know, um, but that's, it's going to be funny because then I'm going to be like talking about it on my channel. Be like, so the worst date I've ever been on or the <laughs> greatest date I've been on. We'll see. <laughs> Yes, I'm excited. I'm excited for these stories to start. How do you feel about, you know, I feel like you're a pretty outgoing person. So, you know, are you comfortable or, you know, at the very least, you're outwardly outgoing or you're good at being social, you know? And so, like, I feel like, are you comfortable with, like, date chit chat? How do you feel about, like, flirting? How do you, um, you know, how do you feel about all that? Are you, you know, does the notion, like, are you just like, I don't know how to do this? Are you like, I got this? Or, you know, I, I've seen a lot of things on, on Reddit and stuff like that. And people, like, cited people are like, how do you flirt with a blind person? They don't see eye contact or, um, you know, nonverbal cues. And then blind people are like, how do you flirt with sighted people? Because I don't see their eye contact or their nonverbal cues. And so, you know, what's your, how do you feel about that? I As definitely- someone getting into the dating world. Right. I definitely understand like the nonverbal cues because I feel like I was just talking about this with another friend earlier. I was like, when we're out, especially at parties, because a lot that's where a lot of people meet people, you know, when they're mm-hmm. out at parties and social gatherings. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for sighted people, it's easy to just look across the room and make eye, t- eye contact with somebody mm-hmm. or wave to somebody. And so um, in terms of like flirting, I think I would be okay. I don't think that it would be like terrible, but I also am not like a pro at it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't know. But I do think that for me, the nonverbal might throw me off a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I'm feel sure like that would just be an adjustment, you know, for both. Yeah. Both of you, you know? I think there's definitely ways to like get around that and still be able to just like get to know somebody and you know talk to them and whatever so Mm -hmm. you know got to touch on the arm rather than like intense Mm -hmm. eye contact you know exactly I am terrible at flirting because I overthink everything Mm -hmm. um and I I can if you know I've definitely been in situations where I'm like, am I, am I flirting right now? Oh, oh my God. And then I'll start to overthink it and I'll just like, I'll lose it. <laughs> but, um, you know, yeah. I'm, uh, but I know this is a worry for sighted blind people, like, you know, and I guess it's just kind of like, go with, go with your gut. If you're not a flirty person, don't push it. If you are, go for it, you know? And uh, for sighted people flirting with blind people, like it's really not that big of a difference. You just have right. to be aware be aware like that this person might miss this but then you could do something like physical again like a hand touch or arm touch or whatever the case may be Mm -hmm. definitely I'm curious to see what like I want to ask some sighted people what they think like what their reactions would be or like how would they approach going on a date with a blind person or just you know getting to learn more about somebody who is blind who they might possibly date 
um it would be interesting to see how that works out but mm -hmm. I don't know I think I feel like I'm gonna be fine like I don't I'm not really gonna stress about it just because that's the best attitude honestly yeah I don't want to be that person that's like oh my god this happened and what, what about this you know mm -hmm. um I don't know it's just gonna I keep saying I don't know because I genuinely <laughs> I mean you don't and it's okay but um, I think you have a great attitude for a foundation yeah so should be fun should be you know a good way to just get out and after being stuck in this house for months on end I <laughs> you know something that's, to look a, for. that's a great segue actually because how do you think, you know, I don't know how much you thought about dating beforehand, but how do you think it might change for you with Corona? Um, like, or how, like, how's, how do you, has your mindset changed about what dating might look like post Corona for you personally? I do in a way, because I feel like it's not, you know, when people go on dates, like even before all of this happened, it was just like, oh yeah, like I'm going on a date with this guy on Friday night or Saturday mm -hmm. night. And I feel like now just being able to not really have the same um like not really being able to interact in the same way with people just because you know everything there's not going to really be any form of normalcy let's be honest here. not for a while yeah not for a while and i think that's a that like plays a big role in situations like that you know because on a regular day people would just be like oh yeah like this is what's happening and great times, but I don't know. It might change after, after all of this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many articles because people are like, you know, that first date kiss is probably going out the window now. There, you know, you don't know if someone has Corona, if they're asymptomatic, you, you know, like it, it's probably, you're going to spend more time getting to know the person than potentially like jumping right into something. That's how a lot of, you know, reporters and articles and stuff like that have like, theorized what dating might look like after corona right um and i don't yeah that's that's a big thing too and i feel like it's definitely not gonna be the same like i think a lot of us and not in a bad way i'm not saying this in a bad way but i think a lot of people depend on dating apps to really find people to just go hang out with or like mm -hmm. whatever go grab coffee with you know just whatever dating whatever you're using it for um, I've had a lot of people tell me they use Tinder just to, like, make friends, which I understand. <laughs> um, and so, even then, it's, it's like, especially when you're blind and you may need assistance with things, it's like, okay, are they gonna help me? Are they gonna feel weird about me, like, holding the touch? And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I think those are a couple of the things that I think about. What about you? Um, so, I feel like definitely you know it's going to be it's going to be weird um i for one will definitely be like oh corona do you have it do you not have it so i'm like kind of talking to someone right now that i was talking to before corona started and so depending on what happens there like maybe it won't be a worry but maybe it will like so i i have no idea what it's going to look like but i definitely agree with the people who think that um who think that it's going to be every, everybody's going to take more time getting to know each other at least initially because you know no one wants that first kiss to be their last kiss like not to be morbid or you know not to be their last kiss before corona sets in and, you know right right so yeah i think i think a lot of things are just going to be taken really slow yeah, I think so, too. I've been reading all these, like, BuzzFeed articles <laughs> on people who have, like, they're, like, people who have found true love during quarantine. I'm, like, mm -hmm, wow, mm -hmm. that's nice. And then they're, like, oh, me, I read one this morning, and they were, like, me and this guy, like, he was my ex, and apparently one day something about, like, they met up, and now they're, like, not exes anymore. I'm, like, <laughs> see, the, all these articles are just, like, craziness I think on the like, opposite end of the spectrum we have the people who got divorced because they were like actually this is not it like I'm not <laughs> being stuck inside for four months with this woman or man like no no exactly so, so it's gonna be interesting I feel like we might see more relationships relationships rekindling but we also may see more of them crumbling like I can get outside now I can get away from you 
Right. Um, so I think I think it's gonna be a really interesting time. It will for sure. Um, do you have any other like questions, concerns, comments? Mm, not that I can think of. But watch when we're done, I'm gonna be like, so. Oh, you're gonna have all of the questions. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, we'll be on Gabby's channel. I don't know if it'll be up by the time I make this video. You know what? No, yeah. I'll make sure I'll upload it when you upload it. So we make sure to have the links. So yeah, okay. um, you know, check us out when we talk about what life will be like um, post-corona for blind people. Yep. Bye. Until next time.